Hey, what you reading for? Longtime viewers of this channel are probably not going to be too surprised to hear me admit that I am a bit, little bit of a book snob. I try to hide it, but I'm not always successful at that. And what I mean by book snob is that I am a demanding reader. If I'm reading a book with um, tired tropes or character traits I've seen a dozen times or a book that's lousy with present participle clauses or when an author inserts themselves into the narrative to interrupt the story and give me a preachy social commentary, I am not going to be happy. And I'm likely to come on this channel and let you good people know about it. However, in 2024, one of my reading goals for the year is to expand my reading horizons, to read beyond my usual genres, which are literary fiction and horror. So with that in mind, in this video, I want to talk about science fiction. What? I have some serious reservations regarding science fiction, and some of them are legit, I think, but some I recognize are due to personal and professional experiences with science fiction and the biases that were formed as a consequence, which I will share with you in a minute. However, despite these biases, uh, I, there have been a few science fiction books that I have quite liked. A few I have even loved, and I am not afraid to admit it. I'm not that much of a book snob. In this video, I'm going to tell you about those books. I'm also going to throw a little bit of hate on a few classics of the genre. Uh, just a little bit of hate. I am also, uh, towards the end of the video, I will also tell you what I like about sci-fi and what I don't or what my reservations are. And with this information, hopefully you will be able to recommend uh, a book for my next sci-fi read. But before we do that, we have a call for help from a viewer. In my previous video, uh, Top 10 Scariest Books I've Ever Read, a viewer left a comment, a cry for help that I was hoping we, we as a community could come together to address. The viewer wrote, and I quote, I read a terrifying sci-fi book. They were in space looking for a planet to colonize, and they found a place where a load of people had been so horribly killed they, that they skedaddled as fast as possible away from there. But then they realized that the mysterious culprits were tracking them and catching up. But it was such a turbulent time in my life that I can't remember the title or the author. Does anyone know it or have an idea of who else I could ask? Naturally, I wanted to help, so I asked for more details. And the viewer went on to write... I think the cover showed a spaceship. I read it in 2002, but it wasn't brand new. It was medium length, not massively long. It was very factiony. There was a lot of conflict on the ship. In fact, the main character spends time in the brig. And right at the end, they make a desperate plan to lure the aliens on board and self-destruct the ship. So they leave just one person to do that. And he glimpses the aliens and freaks out. But the reader never finds out what they were. But it was just so effectively ominous. It delivered major dread, and I would love to read it again. Thank you so much for being interested. So if any of you have an idea of what that book could be, please let us know in the comment section. And now I will hand things over to the great American composer Terry Riley and Kronos Quartet for the intro sequence. And I will see you on the other side for my selection of sci-fi for book snobs. <laughs> A brief backstory to start off with, many years ago, about eight, nine years ago, I was doing a lot of work as a freelance editor, going through manuscripts with a fine tooth comb, correcting the, pronounce, connect, correcting the punctuation, bitching about present participle clauses, and offering suggestions about sentence structure, flow, pacing the plot, that sort of thing. 
and these manuscripts would go on to be published by small presses or many of them would be published or be self-published and over an 18 month period I must have worked on 30 or 40 manuscripts and uh, many of the writers were uh, sci-fi writers and many of these manuscripts were not good manuscripts I'm sorry to say Unfortunately, that experience left its traces on me. My tolerance for present participle clauses was completely exhausted. My um, opinion of and interest in reading sci-fi plummeted. And I know cognitively that this is not fair. I know this. I know that I was not exposed to the best of what sci-fi has to offer. Unfortunately, it is what it is, and I suffered in that way from this experience. But it's 2024, I am eight years removed from that experience. I feel like maybe, maybe I am ready to give science fiction another chance, a fair chance this time, a chance to win over this book snob. But I do have my reservations. I think that sci-fi books tend overwhelmingly to be plot-driven books. Whereas I, as a reader, I am far more, um, I gravitate, gravitate more towards character-driven stories, you know? Is there a science fiction book that focuses on character, that creates unique and compelling characters? I'm thinking that there, there probably are several examples. However, I can't think of any to be honest with you. Also, I find that science fiction often tends to be quite heavy-handed. It doesn't make much use of subtlety. Um, the bad guys are really bad and the heroes are hyper-heroic. And uh, I prefer to explore the grays. I'm more interested in the grays than in the exploring the blacks and whites, if you will. And this is not uh, limited to characters. I feel also in the world building, a lot of science fiction uh, attempts to make political or social commentary through the stories and through the worlds that they build. And to do this, they build worlds that are taken to extremes, which has its charm and is effective, um, but it also, it tires quickly. And lastly, I tend to gravitate towards books with literary flair the prose, the craftsmanship that goes into the book, that is a high priority for me. And I get the sense that the prose and craftsmanship, um, literary flair, that's not really a priority in science fiction. And I'm sure there are many uh, dedicated science fiction fans watching this video who are yelling at their devices because they're thinking of dozens and dozens of examples that, are con that contradict what I'm saying which is partly why I am making this uh, video. That's what I love about this platform. I come on here, I share my experiences, I share my opinions, and then uh, the good people of the BookTube uh, community, uh, they push back in the comment section, they push back on my opinions, and they challenge my opinions, and I want my opinions to be challenged. That is the best way, the, probably the only way I'm going to grow. So I welcome the pushback. And it is partly why I am making this video. So let's take a look at some of the sci-fi books I have read, breaking them down into three subgenres, starting with dystopian fiction, which is a subgenre that is more likely to work on me. My favorites of the subgenre, 1984 by George Orwell, a classic and deservedly so, I think. I love the invention in the language that this book comes up with. It's thanks to 1984 we have expressions such as a big brother and we have the suffix speak such as news speak or booktube speak. 1984 also has one of my favorite lines in all of literature. We have always been at war with East Asia. I love it. The simplicity, the matter of fact, delivered delivery, the bluntness of the lie. 
it packs quite a punch. A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. This book is very important to me. I read this book when I was 16 years old, and it is one of the most important books in my life, or one of the most important books in my development as a person, as far as books go, I think. I grew up in a bilingual, multicultural environment, and I had a, a strange relationship with language. I felt that language was such an integral part of identity, and probably not in a healthy way. I thought that language, that there was correct language and incorrect language, and language was, was written in stone and not to be toyed with. And then I read A Clockwork Orange, and that was a game changer. In A Clockwork Orange, Anthony Burgess takes Russian and he mixes it with Cockney to create a futuristic slang that the youths of England use, uh, notably um, in this gang that the protagonist is the leader of. He takes language and he plays with it and he manipulates it, he changes it <gasps> to create this brilliant and poignant work of literature. I was floored. Now, of course, language is a living thing. Of course, language evolves. And so if you're going to set a story in the future, the language is going to be different. So you have to imagine and create an evolved form of the language. And Anthony Burgess does that super well in A, a Clockwork Orange. Another great example of this manipulation of the language for a future generation is in Anthony Burgess's follow-up to A Clockwork Orange, The Wanting Seed. I love this book. Set in a future overpopulated London, where in an effort to curb the population growth, the government and society at large promote homosexuality, and they look down on childbearing, they look down on parenting. So this couple, uh, the, the man in the couple, he is up for a promotion, and uh, the woman, she wants to have a baby. And the man thinks that this is a terrible idea. I mean, how is he going to get the promotion if, it, if his wife has a baby? That would be a career killer. So the woman, she leaves him and we follow her story. And this book is similar to A Clockwork Orange in many ways, but it's significantly less violent and leans more towards the humor that Anthony Burgess is so good at. Other works of dystopian fiction I have read, uh, A Brave New World by um, Adolf Huxley. Eh, no, that was a big miss on me. Uh, silly and uh, heavy-handed. No. A Knockoff of A Brave New World, This Perfect Day by Ira Levin. No, no. Uh, this Perfect Day, not a perfect book. I love Ira Levin. But this one did not work on me. Uh, it's heavy-handed, lacks subtlety, and just no semblance of realism to it. It's fun in camp and places, notably the last act, but overall it was a miss for me. Um, Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica. Yeah, okay, I like that book, yeah. Uh, it's billed as a horror book sometimes, but that's really only the last few pages. Uh, but it's dark and disturbing and a good book. Another subgenre that is very likely to work on me is the sci-fi horror hybrid. And a few titles I have read that I've enjoyed. Um, Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Uh, this is the first in the Southern Reach trilogy. A group of scientists go into um, this area that has been cut off from civilization because this area has been uh, transformed somehow by something and the people who enter it uh, they are transformed they, they undergo drastic shifts in personality um, that that include rage and murderous impulses I liked this book without loving it but I liked it enough that I might should check out the other installments in this trilogy also, Blood Music by Greg Bear, a fun 1980s sci-fi horror hybrid about an intelligent mutating virus 
uh, that was created in a lab. It escapes the lab and then embarks on its mission to transform the world. The book starts off as a compelling body horror and then halfway through it shifts and becomes a global sci-fi world transformation slash philosophical examination of life. I really liked how the book was put together. I felt like I experienced two different yet um, complementary stories and I liked both of them a lot. The third subgenre is hard sci-fi, which often involves spaceships and space exploration and human-like life forms on other planets. This is a very hard sell on me and I gener generally try to avoid hard sci-fi. I feel that a lot of hard sci-fi goes for an allegory of making social or political commentary with its worlds that it creates and with its plot. I am completely disinterested in politics. I mean completely disinterested. So a social political allegory, I am going to be extremely resistant to that. That's too close to politics for me. No thank you. However, I did read a hard sci-fi book that I thought was, uh, was pretty, it was okay, it's not bad. And that was uh, Solar Lottery by Philip K. Dick. Very interesting premise, although perhaps it, it falters a bit in its execution. This, in this world, uh, this galactic world, this galactic empire, uh, the leader is elected through a lottery. And the winner of this lottery then must withstand a series of assassination attempts. And if he or she withstands these assassination attempts, then they can go on and govern. So we follow the winner of the lottery and we follow an assassin trying to end this leader. I'm thinking Philip K. Dick has probably written better, um, but this is the only one from him that I've read. And uh, I liked it, but I'm not eager to read another one from him. I do like the movies though, Minority Report, Total Recall. Uh, what's the other one, the, with Harrison Ford, with the androids, I like that one too. But um, I had Solar Lottery was good, uh, I, I'm good, I'll, I'll stay there. So what will my next sci-fi read be? Well, I was hoping that you could help me with that. A few options. I could read um, another installment of the Southern Reach trilogy. I would like to read another book by Greg Bear. He has uh, the Infinity Concerto, which appeals to me. On name alone, I am interested. I would also like to read something else by Steve Rasnick Tem. I really liked his horror offering, Bloodkin, uh, and I'd like to read more from him. I, I did read Deadfall Hotel, but I didn't care much for that. And it seems like the rest of his catalog is, is mostly sci-fi, so I haven't checked it out, but I would like to read more from him. I also have The Day of the Triffids on my TBR. It has been on my TBR for ages. Maybe I will get around to reading it sometime soon. I am looking for something that is well written. Quality of the prose is super important. I want some literary flair in my books. I'm also drawn to character driven stories. I do want interesting, compelling, unique characters. And I'm incredibly resistant to political or social commentary or um, allegories. Uh, I am much more interested in a book that explores the human condition or explores a personal psychological issue rather than a social or political one. So if you can think of a, a book that, that meets that criteria, a book that you think I would like, um, please do let me know about it in the comment section. I um, love, always love hearing your recommendations. Preference for contemporary over classics and preference for shorter books, medium-sized books, longer books not so much because uh, I am still skeptical of sci-fi, let's be honest. Do you have any experience with the books or authors I talked about in this video? I look forward to connecting with you in the comments section. Uh, do give this video a like and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, I have books out, uh, short story collections, uh, novellas of psychological horror, uh, 
support the channel, buy yourself a book, and thank you for watching. I will see you at the next video.